Welcome back, friends, to Occultist Anonymous, sponsored by Roll20, the Onyx Path, and viewers like you, thank you very much for joining us on this lovely Friday, if you're watching us live, uh, or, you know, whatever day it is uh, where you are, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube or listening on the podcasts. A uh, special shout out to our patrons who support us monetarily. Thank you very much for your support. It means a lot to us um, and is uh, continually surprising and uh, very encouraging. Uh, thank you to Adele, Al, Alexander, Angfalleth, Bernie, Blood Angel, Buck, Chris, Clara, uh, Daniel, Doc the Undead, Doggo Deloon, Emil, Funzusu Raleigh, George, Jack, Jenny, John, Josh, Julian, Cat Feathers, Crazy Man 1772, Michael, Milo V3, Ms. Grumpy, Moku, Mozart D Minor, Mysterium not affiliated with a fishbowl wearing supervillains, Noba, Other Michael, <laughs> Perry, Puppeteer, Riafio, Ryan, Shaksara, Terran, Technical Issues Incoming. Why would you put that in here? Uh, Thomas, <laughs> Toast, Usasama, Vortex, Wizard Dick, and Zoltan. Mm. Is that Wizard Richard? Uh, or nope. Wizard Phallus? Nope. It's uh, Wizard Ick. Mm. Just the one D. Yeah, you might want to enunciate that a little more carefully next time. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's one word. It is one word. Yeah. Wizard Dick. Wizard Dick. <laughs> All right, moving right along, um, back into uh, Purgatory Bluff in the basement room of a one, well, basement laboratory secret lab of uh, <clears throat> Miss. Uh, <laughs> no, I have an easement in my head to the secret lab. Anyway, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, uh, Theod uh, Theodosia, also known as Baba Sira, um, having revived and. I wouldn't say necessarily healed, but uh, urged on um, a previously catatonic Isabel, who's uh, kind of shaken off the, the worst of things and is open to new adventures um, to the point of finally increasing her gnosis. Uh, actually, good question, Chris. Um, has that happened yet? Okay, cool. Um, and I know also Legba, who uh, Ralph was so kind as to not make a big deal about it, was also increased Gnosis, uh, which actually, because I keep skipping over this because we've had a couple other Gnosis increases. Um, what is this new revelation for the two of you um, that has kind of opened your eyes, you know, in a sentence or two? Uh, I think it's all centers around realizing that uh you know spirits can do bad things too or that they have done bad things uh specifically to me that they're not sort of just this gift that i'm able to access mm -hmm. kind of like i thought it was gotcha um, has that also changed your uh vice and virtue uh, i don't think so okay maybe it notices three We'll see. Sure. And what about for Ralph? For Legba? Legba has recognized that it is not a personal fault when he leans into protecting people. It's a personal fault when he hesitates to use his power judiciously. And that includes understanding the limits of that power, understanding wherein people might have gaps in their own understanding of their own abilities, mundane or supernal. So for him, getting to Gnosis 4 is, you know, a change in vice and a change in obsession. He's been trying to anchor positive sympathy to Purgatory Bluff or cultivate positive sympathies in Purgatory Bluff so that he can enable people to behave better, right? But one thing they need to be able to do is make effective choices and encouraging them to behave better implies his perspective on what those choices might be as opposed to now giving them knowledge that they can make an informed choice like exactly cool. and recognizing that and enlightened wisdom it's not he shouldn't be functioning as a moral authority if his role is to help people get grow in understanding, then he needs to accept that sometimes that might lead to them doing things that others might consider abhorrent. Mm -hmm. oh. um, 
And the, oh, uh, uh, what is your vice and virtue now? Because yeah, you did actually have a change. Virtue is still inspiring. Because I think it's still relevant to his mission. But the vice is hesitant. No. Because that's what he needs to overcome. He doesn't yeah. need to overcome the limitations of protecting people. He needs to overcome what prevents him from doing it quickly and judiciously. Like as that experience in the in the Oneros revealed for him. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, we have the four members of Purgatory Bluff, uh, Coven and Jules Lamb, uh, who I guess is technically kind of still part of the Coven. Um, hey, let's be, let's be inclusive here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's in. He's yeah. just not a wizard. Not a witch, yeah. No, yeah. Um, and uh, what is your guys' plan? Because uh, to, to remind you, several sessions back and multiple weeks back, um, you know, Sheriff Isabel had ridden into town kind of in a bit of a blustered state um, and been run out to, you know, safety of the farm. But there's still bandits out there. There's possibly still some troubleshooters out there keeping watch. Uh, militia was getting organized by Mr. Enright. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's then, a horrible paradox storm that's raising the dead, maybe. Yes, yeah, so we discussed last session going out there to clean up the mess. Yeah, my, before our um, uh, Diamond Order friends see it. Yep, exactly. Before we have to discuss it with them. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have. Do we have a plan for that? Are we just going to go wing it? Imagine this is a conversation you were having while walking towards while the bridge. Yep. Yeah, it's just like, do we have... What's our approach? I'm reasonably confident that if there's walking dead around, that I have tools to deal with them. If the, they are indeed dead. If they're dead. If they're actually dead. The, the paradox um, is a concerning element, but we're not going to know anything until we get out there. Which brings to the other question, how are you guys getting out there? Because it was uh, about an hour out uh, by riding for Isabel to get out to where she was all alone. Uh, and by my count, there is only the one horse among the group of you um, now. Uh, Gisela's family does have a horse back at her house. Or do you guys go full magic bullshit about this and, you know, find some other way of getting out that way? One, Theo, or, I mean, Theo has a horse as well, and that the cart was pulled by a mountain. Mm. Sure. Yeah. For speed purposes, we might just want to do it magically. Is there a need for us to get there quickly? There are undead people that are possibly coming this way. We might encounter them on the way. Um, my concern is that the storm might be the issue, and if it's expanding, that could be a bigger problem to deal with. might be faster to deal with it sooner than later. Hmm. consequences would they be greater if we waited and got there mundanely probably I'm not so sure because also if it moves and if we're trying to fix this before I've lost her name uh, before she finds out Mm -hmm. well Isabel. Oh, Egrog. Sorry. By the way. It only starts with an E. It's not a Gregor, but it's almost. Yeah. <laughs> what was your intent for the spell when you cast it? To slow them down. To harass them. For the storm like itself, to... did you intend for it to last long? Long enough. Did you intend for it to move? Not generally how it works. 
Well, Obviously, then. there is movement, but. That assuages my concern that it might move locations. Well, bear in mind, this is just a nudge to make it a big storm. Once it's made, it's going to keep being a storm. Till it burns, rains itself out. I don't think we are there to dispel a storm. I think we are there to clean up the paradox. And I suspect that the paradox will be fixed in that location. I think of it like a blight. Like we've released an abyssal pollution into an area. And we need to go there and clean it up with the equivalent of supernal elbow grease. And so in therein, I think that it would be hubristic for us to get there quickly through magical means. We can walk. It's like a three-hour walk. Or we can wait here for a short while and I might be able to create us a portal. To find a short while. Like holds up his hands and says, however long it takes, maybe an hour, maybe two. You know that Time isn't a fixed construct in the astral realms. It's more it's of just, a narrative thing. I could just use Ground Eater, but I don't know that spell, so... Are you saying that in character? I mean, in character, I don't know what you can do, so... Yeah, I mean, well, out of character, right? If we're talking out of character, of course, co-location what we do instantaneously... So in, well, in location, character, you would need something at the other end. I'm just going to like, let us move faster as we go. Yeah, uh, there, there are lots of ways to potentially yeah, get buddy. a sympathetic tie to the area. Um, could just see it. Yeah, hey, exactly. I mean, going talking to one of the people, their blood might have been left there or... No, I mean, I could just give you zoom in. And then oh, you go, yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah, that's see, that's that's one option. Oh, time three for acceleration. No super speed yet. But if Cloak doesn't want to use magic to do to get there, then like it doesn't really matter how many oh. times, how many different ways we can do it. I mean, what also I mean just is mechanically going and repeatedly taking my family's workhorse is not subtle. What I meant is there is a let's say magical means and it would suit me just fine. But it would require much more time. Not nearly as long as it would take to walk, but I'm also fine walking there. Or riding behind someone on a horse. I know we could also spend a lot of time just here debating. By the time yeah. we get the spell down, we could already be mostly there. How about this? How about we continue to walk? And I'm going to be a little silent for a while while I explore this option as we're walking. Sure. Cool. And then Cloak is going to take advantage of walking two worlds. Just go ahead and explain to everybody else what that is. Is uh, first legacy attainment, which in many ways is a adaptation of the rote one mind, two thoughts. <laughs> Cloak has gained the ability to retain his consciousness and move around in a material reality while his consciousness is exploring the astral realms. So there are a number of uh, mechanical consequences as well, which I think uh, we can share with people through a document later. Uh, the one thing I will remind Ralph uh, yeah. is like we're only talking about walking like a short distance not necessarily mm -hmm. out into the wilderness here 
yeah, not uh, throughout it. So it's, um, well, that's, I think what we discussed is that in order to act, right, you have to devote all, all <clears throat> your conscious attention. Right. Uh, so anyway, uh, the, the option would be moving into the astral realms while traversing elsewhere. So if somebody else, if he's on the back of a horse, for example, and just clutching someone and not doing anything else, he can navigate the astral realms or moving. He can also retain his perception of material reality. And attached to that is also an adaptation of the outward and inward eye, which is effectively constantly on. So we'll travel cool. overland. Sounds like. Uh, cool. Isabel can take cloak on her horse. Okay. Great. Which does uh, bring us back around to Gizlo's question of, uh, are you stealing the family horse? Or are you letting them know or? I mean, can I just ride with you? Like, I really don't want to keep just acting like this is my horse to take when I want to leave for hours with it because it's not. Yeah, I mean, if you guys aren't pushing the horses and just kind of moving at a walk, you know, two people on a horse, especially, <laughs> let's be honest, Gisela and Theo are not big people. And it's going to be a big horse. Yeah, it's, it's a big the cart. horse. Yep. Okay, so yeah, you guys have, have this moment and it's like, all right, hang on. Um, get the horse, get Jose who's you know still up near the uh, the bar um, and make your way out into the wilderness and start, you know, horse riding out that direction. Um, at which point, you know, well, once horseback on horseback, um, Legba kind of goes not quite catatonic, but kind of somewhere else. Well, I actually, I guess visually it probably doesn't even look all that different because you are still aware. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just quiet. There you go. Uh, which also means uh, you need to roll resolve plus composure, which just did. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get a beep. Oh, there's the beep. <laughs> cool. Four <laughs> successes. Um, so, yeah, able to slip into the astral after an hour. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, by which point, uh, for the everybody else, you guys have kind of made it out that way. Um, and we need to figure out exactly how you guys are dealing with the troubleshooters. Because uh, this is something out of character. Well, in character. Um, Isabel. Going to get these names straight eventually. Uh, would remember that you're going to be, you know, coming by some of the troubleshooters, you know, because they'd been left out here. Uh, or potentially um, you didn't see them when you went into town for Jose. Um, so you going out with Legba, well, cloak, uh, you know, behind you. And then Theo and uh, Gisela on another horse. You guys attempt to conceal yourselves, go meet up with the sharpshooters. What, what is your plan for dealing with them to try and maintain this, uh, alternate identity superhero uh kind of thing going on or actually do you guys care i would just because this we shouldn't be out here mm -hmm. so i think avoiding them if we can is best yeah, i concur and then what about uh cloak and uh Isabel, since you guys are on the other horse. Yeah. Uh, Cloak doesn't care. If they ask a question, Cloak will say that uh, we're going to investigate what Sheriff Isabel learned about and that it is far too dangerous for them to deal with. So they yeah. should stay here. Well, before, before we get into what you say, because we mm -hmm. may not run into them, uh, but uh, I like I like the idea of Isabel and Cloak intentionally like running interference almost like intentionally mm -hmm. running into them. Okay. 
And then because, that is a distraction for the other two. To yeah, get by. that excuse works for you. Right. It mm-hmm. does not work for it's true. Two. Farmer, weaver, and the shop girl. Right. Mm-hmm. Which like, actually does does bring up because Sheriff Isabel had made mention about the dead, you know, rising. Yep. And then you go and get the voodoo expert. I did not mention. Okay, that. was it mentioned out loud? Okay, I couldn't remember. All I said was a storm came out of nowhere. Okay, that's right. You told us the dead are right, and it was via the right. via telepathy that came up. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. But nonetheless, yeah, storm coming up. Go get the uh, the ungun cloak. Kind of makes sense. Um, Let's look you up just like a oh <laughs> fairly <laughs> yeah. weak fate spell, just as a sort of let us not be where. Um, I They're mean, looking. Uh, that sounds actually very much like a uh, green light, red light, red light, green light. Mm-hmm. With a with a bent of not necessarily slowing them down, just mm-hmm. hey, it doesn't just slow them down; just helps you. Mm-hmm. Your timing is good, right? Uh, for the three of us, that would be advanced scale. Would that cover all of us? Um, Me and her and the horse. Right. Um, advanced scale will actually, and it was kind of funny, we were talking about this in chat the other day, um, maybe even yesterday. Uh, because of the size of the horse, uh, no, advanced scale will not actually cover it because horsey is at least size seven. It's a seven, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where I was thinking. Um, which does mean that advanced scale minus two would cover it or standard scale minus four. Okay, so for each instant duration scale, minus two. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'll overreach by one because I only have two in time. Okay. Do, 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 do. Roll one paradox. Cool. Nothing happens. Reach, bump, bump. And I am using the shadow name for this because it's yeah. Absolutely. Uh four four eight six dice. Six. Nice. So close, but regardless, yeah, so as the the two horses diverge, um and I think I like that cinematically, like we're traveling parallel, but just like clumps of trees or a small rise in the land happen to line up so that nobody sees <laughs> that's, each other. That's pretty good. That's yeah. Um, and just like riding like up and down over hills. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so you uh, you two, sorry, uh, uh, Isabel and uh, Cloak do come across one of the uh, the troubleshooters who's kind of keeping an eye out and. Uh, he mentions that he saw, you know, sheriff run into town, and now is showing up with cloak. And you guys give him the the quick rundown of, yeah, hang on, something weird's going on. We're we're gonna go take a look. Um, and he, at the mention from cloak saying, oh, you know, it's you, you don't need to come out here; it's dangerous and stuff like that. You know, troubleshooter kind of shifts and kind of looks at the two of you and goes, should 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 we go back then? Because he's looking up at the storm, which is continuing to get bigger, and like this is going to be a big old storm. Um, yes. Yeah, I I don't think there's a reason for y'all to be out here anymore. Okay, good. <laughs> like gathers reins, wheels the horse around, and like heads off in the direction towards you know basically parallel to the town. Go find some of the other troubleshooters that had been dropped off. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll go round up the boys and we'll, we'll go help the militia get together or whatever. And we'll get indoors. Keeps looking up at the rain. Um, meanwhile, uh, as he's turning the horse that way, Gisela and Theo are off the other direction there. Um, and you guys kind of separate and come back around and, uh, you guys find yourselves, you know, back together. Lord. <laughs> Hi, chat. I love you guys. Uh, <laughs> Howdy, partners. Uh, but uh, as the uh, two horses, the four of you all uh, reconverge. Uh, oh, a quick note. Jules went to go find Rilla because, of course, he did. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, at this point, now that you're headed out directly towards them, uh, we also jump over to Cloak. Um, uh, at this point now, 
you can see the world around you um, and then kind of. Uh, well, actually, um, how does Cloak enter the astral now? Now that you have this kind of uh, attention split. Hmm. Well, he feels kind of like there's a. Hmm. He duplicates himself in his mind. Two cloaks. <laughs> Mirror image. And uh, for him, the difference is that like his astral experience is no different other than if he, you know, needs to concentrate on a physical action. It's it's the, the new experience is being conscious in the physical world, right? So that that's what feels like um a novel ability for him. I like that. Um and so horseback cloak continues to hang on to the back of Isabel. Other mm -hmm. cloak drops into um actually not the Oneros, probably directly into the Temenos. Yeah. Okay, where in the Temenos are you aiming? He's aiming for Purgatory Bluff. And he's assuming that there's going to be some Timonotic connection with the areas around it. And uh, what he's hoping for is that uh, then he can connect with Isabel and get an image of the area. And of the person, you know, like any names and stuff like that. Okay. So once he's once he's now in the astral, he can then uh, do what he's done before, right? Which is activate telepathy using his second legacy attainment okay. and connect with her mind and then say, please share with me an image of the area and I might be able to give us a portal. Cool. Yeah. So you drop into the the astral. Uh, yeah, guys. Um, <laughs> Legba's, Legba's legacy is very, very true. Uh, <laughs> we're going to do all sorts of dumb shit in the astral right now. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, dropping into Temenos uh, Purgatory Bluff, uh, which looks riled up like a bunch of bee, like a beehive. A um, mm, lot of cool. activity, a lot of stuff changing. There's a lot of goetic spirits of uh, fear and violence. Um, mm. Also some of, you know, like eagerness of, ooh, something's actually happening out here. Um, a whole lot of different stuff going on in Purgatory Bluff. Um, Activating telepathy is free because it's a legacy attainment for you. Um, yeah. And <laughs> how does. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, you guys can just have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you get the ping again. It's always, you know, a request, right? And uh, you hear in your mind. If you give me an image. Of the area. <laughs> And any names you have of the people you saw. I am now in the Timonotic representation of Burgatory Bluff. And I might be able to give us swifter passage through there to where we need to be. Um, how would I know their names? I appreciate that you're communicating telepathically, but then Cloak shrugs his shoulders behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's in both, right? Both places. So um, he definitely shrugs. Um, and then he says, um, you are a witch. Wrong kind of witch. <laughs> I don't know. You might have heard them say something. And it doesn't necessarily have to be their name name, right? Like it could be the category yeah, whatever that, they're called. that Isabel would have put them in. That's a good point. Big but dopey you, guy. Mm -hmm. There's no, I mean, uh, for, because Legman knows there's no way that just having seen them is going to have made any real uh, sympathetic connection. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and I'll think real hard about Big guy standing in the middle, executing the other yep. guy. Did you hear anything else? No. All right, hold on a moment. And then uh, he uh, sends out a, a ping to Gisela. Here we go. 
Time number two. Isla. Okay. Hello. <laughs> In the hours you spent with those men as you walked them back to town, did they give you any information about the people we're likely going to come in conflict with? They didn't... Well, it's because they didn't know much about them. They, um... Bandits. They took people away. Mm -hmm. Initially, there were a lot more of them. But as time went on, they would take them out of the cage and then that person wouldn't come back. But they don't know a whole lot about the people. They spend all their time in a cage. Hmm. Can you divine the name of the leader of this group? Um, I can get a right number. Does that work on names? No. Why not? Yeah, I don't think so. Lucky number, I don't quite, because that's... It, like, lets you get the right combination for something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, like, if you're playing Hangman to figure out somebody's name... Yeah, uh, more specifically, I'm wondering, that would actually be more of a actual divination... Yeah, question. That's what I was. That's what I meant. Yeah. Because mm -hmm, that lets you get a complex answer. It's true. I can see. Hmm. I took that one as a praxis also. Ooh. Alrighty. Awesome. I'm totally cool with this spell totally happening, but I'm sitting here wondering. Why don't mages all do that for... Oh, actually, I guess Shadow Name would actually protect you. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, Shadow Name helps. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's like, man, every mage would be like, I need time one so I can figure out that asshole's name. Uh, that's that's no. why people take Shadow Name and Occultation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Trying to remember how many more reaches is the complicated answer. Just one. One. Mm -hmm. So with your time two, you can do it for instant and the extra answer. Or the complex answer in your head. My concern is the target. Because it's got to be in relation to me. Mm -hmm. Because we did this before with Jules. I couldn't ask a question about him. I had to ask a question about how I was influencing him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, the way fate works, right, is you conceive of a future and you see what happens, right? Uh, it's and a it, it's time, not fate. Sorry, time. Right, but the way, it, the way the way divination works, right? You're thinking of your future and your most likely outcome. So, if you were to ask this person's name, right? If you assert in your mind that you're going to ask him what his name is or try and figure it out, then you'd ask the question of yourself: What name will I realize when I ask this guy what his name is, or I interrogate him? Or there's, there's all kinds of ways you can do this, right? Like it is the spell is knowing something about the future, right? Like getting away from the rote, just the practice of knowing. If you are planning on doing something, then you can know what the outcome would be by casting the spell. My only concern is I'm not planning on talking to this guy. Well, well I get that. But what I'm saying like, is if you were- in a hypothetical future where I did, it's like, but legitimately, I don't think- Well, then you assert- That's not a future. <laughs> Well, you, you assert that you do. What I'm, what I'm just trying to make. I'm gonna. I, I feel like this is exactly. It's it's all magic. Dancing around right? the way it's meant to work. Well, it's a it's a, just. A, I would avoid thinking of it in terms of the rote and think of it in terms of an improvised spell. He's definitely uh, going after like the arrival time hijinks vibes from that movie. <laughs> Rival <laughs> is a good movie, <laughs> but I, I'm I'm more so thinking of it, it just based on the, what it says in the tin with the practice. So that's one one reason why I prefer to avoid the rotes is we get constrained by what they describe as opposed to the fact that magic is so encompassing of all kinds of different possibilities. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. But I'm not trying to assert what you do, right? I'm, I, that's, I'm just trying to explain why I was thinking of it. Yeah, if, I guess it only needs two reach then. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you have a... Yeah, a question to ask about your future or because technically you have the subjects around. So you've got Theo, you got a horse. I don't know why the horse would know this guy's name. But. Uh, 
Am I actually quiet? I forgot to write in the um, Yarkona number. Oh, that's fine. But it's, it's two. So that's just eight. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Sure. Yeah. Right. Great. Okay. <laughs> you try and bluff. Yeah, his name's uh, uh, James. <laughs> I draw a card and just appear like static in my brain. <laughs> King James. Jack. <laughs> Bible. I can try again at seven. Up to you. This has never failed. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is a leader of these bandits who are taking people and presumably selling him to slavery. I'm almost positive he's not going to survive this encounter and there's going to be a headstone in the graveyard. Oh, you're going to actually success. give him a headstone? Oh, yeah. You have to... Anybody gets buried deserves a headstone. Okay. I don't know the path that he took to get to where he is or what might have influenced him. Or maybe in the moment of death, what regrets he might have had. There's, I got a success. All right. And uh, you do have two uh, two times. So you have two questions. Um, yeah. I guess. What will this man tell me his name is? And alternately, will I ever... Um, Like, as we were exploring, I mean, will I is wrong the answer that's yes or no. But I want to know, like, are we going to find out what they were doing with the people they were taking away? Like, what was that? Ooh, okay, cool. Um, all right. Like, looking through their camp, seeing, like, what will we find? Sure. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, had to had to look over my notes uh, about this guy. Uh, so yes, um, he will tell you that he is the boss. Um, you ever tell me his actual name? <laughs> probably not. No. Uh, the other question then uh, is, uh, yeah, to determine what happened to the others, um, you will have to. It's um. Right way to put this. Uh, incapacitate the man. Mm. But if we... So don't call him. Knock him out. And then he can tell us what I'm doing. Just kind of the vibe you got? Yeah. It is definitely a... He is not about to just uh, converse with you all. Yeah, he's not going to talk to us. You're going to need to go inside his brain and get the information. That That is another interpretation, yes. They're going to scare the shit out of him. That's what's going to happen. So telepathically, right. what do you tell back to uh, to Legba there? Didn't get much. All I'm seeing, this guy is not going to talk. Hmm. I have to find another way to get information from him. Now, one thing I will give you, just, just so we don't accidentally overblow this um is that incapacitate as in you know potentially capture as opposed to necessarily like walk in he's gonna you know chat with you guys makes sense which there yeah i don't i think everybody goes yeah that mm, sounds about right like but says there are lots of ways to get someone to talk well if he thinks of himself as a boss I'm sure there are others who call him the boss. So but then, character wise, though, the divination kind of suggests that the only way we're going to get the info is to incapacitate him, right? And that's sort of a, um, a Schrodinger's situation. Like we've divined it, so that's now the path. Not nah, because, well, okay, for for uh, for Theo, that might be you know the thing. But Craig, yeah, you yeah. know that's not how time works. As soon as you look at the future. I mean, we could still kill him. We just might not get information from him that way. Mm -hmm. And specifically, that's... Well, I guess it's true. Yeah, there are other people there, too. But, yeah. 
We do have a necromancer too. I'm going to also roll into the camp and then look yeah. at the past and see what's been going exactly. on here. Mm -hmm. Lots of ways to get info when you're wizards. Uh, so Legba's astral representation picks up his cane, you know, his Rottweiler headed cane and stomps the ground, which uh, I think as we discussed, he's been cultivating these like dog like Goetia. Mm -hmm. um, and if one uh, um, responds to his summons, right, then uh, he'll he'll tell it like give it the 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 scent the astral scent of the boss not in the he knows what it is but just the idea like find the boss okay so you're like, trying to find a like rank one goetia yeah okay yeah that's what I, I think i'd like to do yeah okay. so i can send it on this to find out wherever the boss might be in and around what's this area around purgatory mm -hmm. bluff the links off of it and stuff like that, that I did exactly that. you cool. travel into the future of the Tomatoes and find Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or is Bruce Str Springsteen a supernal symbol and has always existed? Uh, fast forward to Bruce Springsteen being the one thing holding well, back the Exarchs. <laughs> well, but that would be like the entertainer, which would move from person to person through area to area. So, so, supernally gifted uh, title. Um, uh, so, uh, his, his, his genes are an evil on. That's what we've right. learned. Yes. <laughs> um, so oh, yes, uh, for your hey, Goetia. Noctaw. Real quick. Fill, let's fill in Noctaw. Uh, I mean, you just chat. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so for the, uh, the Goetia, um, because, uh, we haven't actually had too much interaction with Goetia. Um, yes, the dog, you know, heeds your summons and looks at you and you know you you give the task and yeah i'm going to assume all dogs talk in the tomatoes um because why not um kind of looks at you and goes but why kind of looks you up and down it's like mm -hmm. you know i serve legba but i know who you are i am legba and I need, uh, well, I guess it's going to be not a, uh, the, what is that? Power plus persuasion. Roll. Cool. And then I believe you get a bonus because you are, uh, yep. shadow self. Mm hmm. Let me make sure what that is. I think it's a plus two. It sounds right. Some screwies going on with my mouse. I don't know why. Yeah, it looks like cool. All right. Moving my mouse super slow. I don't know what's going on with my mouse. All right, I'll stop talking about it. Presence, persuasion, plus two. There it goes. <laughs> One success. Um, so it looks oh, at you, yeah. and there's there's definitely this narrowing eyes. Uh, mm -hmm. Very, you know, very you know, meme. There's that dog. Uh, I hope everybody else is seeing the same dog I am. Um, but, uh, you know, kind of looks at you and then just kind of turns away. There's definitely this like, I don't think you're Legba, but I don't have enough evidence to prove otherwise. So I'm going to go do this. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and it kind of like skulks uh, off through the the you know swarming actor goetia zero or rank zero goetia um mm -hmm. and then just kind of disappears into the uh the wilderness basically and clearly is stepping into a different uh Temenos realm um on the physical side uh for everybody riding through it is now officially uh getting kind of rainy hit the hit the storm wall or rather actually you're just now in the the uh the sprinkles of it you can see the storm wall coming and um yeah isabel did a good job <laughs> um now if i remember correctly you didn't put any potency into it to actually create the uh, extreme environment so it's not going to cause any difficulty it's just about to get real cold and soaking wet um and so uh as that kind of hits you guys or anybody making preparations to avoid that 
Okay. Uh, you know, it hits you and visibility drops a little bit. Uh, not terribly, because again, we're not messing with the extreme environment, but it is still a big gnarly rainstorm. Um, the light levels come down um, and you guys continue on forward. And at this point uh, are able to make out uh, darkened, shadowy shapes of the camp. Um, mm. And there is a little bit of light coming through um, in the large bonfire thing that had been in the center of the camp uh still going in the rain um you know but it is definitely like that guttering it's trying real hard kind of thing uh but it also creates this kind of well depend on how you, how you think of it and look at it an eerie or welcoming uh kind of orange glow to some of the uh the rain that is coming down and you see shadowy black figures moving around um and at this point now can also make out uh men on horseback who are also kind of patrolling around and um some of the horses look like they're actually um uh what am i saying loaded and have like saddlebags packed and stuff like that theo we are casting lodestone as because theo says fuck this rain Fuck this you rain. don't have to get wet. Yep. Um, cool. So that's for uh, Gisela and myself and the horse. Oh, thank you. And the horse. <laughs> or, uh, well, actually, yeah, we had that discussion. This horse would count as extra scale, right? So just me. Uh, advanced scale minus two. Yeah, course. so me and Gisela. All of us and the horse. Okay. Okay. Doop, doop, doop. And the reach was for instant, instant duration. Cast, uh, advanced duration and uh, I figured it out for you. Oh, scale, advanced scale. So minus two. So we cover the horse in. Cool. Yeah, the, the horse is just like, dude, this is the best trot through the rain ever as this rain just doesn't quite land and just kind of shapes around the the three of you. I like that. Uh, yeah, because no. Yeah, OK, cool. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so at this point now, you all can see the camp in the distance. Um, and. Not able to make out too much of what's going on currently. Um, yeah. What's going on in spirit side? Flipping that on. Um, tons of storm. Well, no, I take that back. Bunch of rain and wind. Uh, I almost said spren. Uh, spirits are hanging out. Um, just soaking up the resonance that is in here. Um, as one might expect, uh, especially in this region, Alfoth is moving through the storm. Uh, it's a kind of smaller storm for him, but it is getting bigger and you realize. Well, he can eat the little ones. Mm -hmm. He can eat right. the little ones. Uh, and notably, the storm itself at this point, if he's here, you know that it's it, this is this is the start of it because he's going to use influence to right. bump it up. Uh, once once st a storm starts in the Purgatory Bluff area, it it tends to always get big, uh, especially over the past year or two. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, the year, not year two. Um, at down lower, um, actually, I guess because at, at this distance, I don't think you would actually be able to see what is going on spirit wise in the camp either. Uh, but yeah, otherwise the, the spirits within the storm itself feel much like is what Isabel is used to seeing. Nothing kind of stands out. I got excited about Alphoth being there, but he's not a supernal. He's a spirit. <laughs> no. If you ask, he, he, oh yeah, I'm totally supernal. Whatever that means. It sounds like an important thing. So I'm it. Sounds like a proper adjective for a mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm in marching closer still, so okay. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna briefly turn on Mage Sight, and this will be the first. No, I, actually, not the first time I was gonna say something, but anyway, briefly turn on Mage Sight and try and count the minds I can see. Okay. Um. Hmm. <laughs> 
careful using Mates Hide around a missile incursions just from experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, Two, it's, it's but so 11,000. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm, <laughs> um, trying to think. Well, yeah, I guess at this point you can easily just start counting and trying to keep track. Um, because they are all shifting and moving and stuff like that. Uh, but you have all the time in the world as you are writing and kind of in the astral kind of just chilling, waiting for a dog to show up. Um, I imagine there's one half of your brain that's counting and another half that's kind of keep track of everything moving. Um, but yeah, you, all parking, you know, without exact number, probably 100 men. Mm, wow. I have a question. How long is this ride? Um, at this point, you're getting into like the second hour now. Okay, I was wondering if I'd have time to do a not instant cast spell because my ritual duration is an hour at Gnosis two, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it's at Gnosis three. It becomes an hour. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. It starts at three hours. Shit, I yeah. forgot okay. about that. Right. So not long it's, it's, it's the odd Gnosis right. levels. I, I just legitimately forgot where it started. I forgot it started mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. three. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. So not quite. <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah, but yeah, about a hundred men, uh, a hundred minds. Um, and then, uh, as you guys continue getting closer, um, I would say once, well, yeah, actually, eventually you guys are close enough that Isabel, you are able to see Petricor is able to see that there are some, Around people, there's always various emotion spirits that are clinging on and stuff like that. And this is the part. (laughs) Yeah, uh, this is the part where you go, oh, that's what I did. Or potentially Um, among all of the various different emotions that, you know, humans would feel. And, you know, it's a storm. So there's a lot of annoyance and irritation and. Uh, it's a bunch of bandits, so there's some greed stuff clinging on to some people like weird tumors. and But amongst them are these gnarly looking red spirits. You would normally like that looks kind of like anger and you've definitely seen anger in the past year, but they're definitely twisted up a little bit. Um mm-hmm. You haven't. Hello, Brandon. Yeah, Sanderson. yeah, yeah. Shut up. If I, got it. Um, <laughs> I was already planning that, and then I got deeper into this stupid book. I'm like, damn it. Uh, but yes, um, twist it up. And based on your prior understanding of um, an education by the Diamond Order, these look like paradox spirits or something like them um not but they don't quite fall into the 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 terms you can kind of remember Golmoth and and some of those other that were like actual paradox entities these look like they've just been kind of twisted up and uh i guess in to, to use modern parlance these guys look like spirits of anger but roided up um mm. and are just like pumping with extra influence to kind of throw around um, and getting this close, even though the storm is, uh, you know, roiling, you've got some thunder and stuff like that and the actual pouring rain. All the voices that you hear, obviously they are shouting over the storm and they're all just fucking pissed. Ash whipping up a fool's rush in. (laughs) Yeah, because we we don't have a plan. (laughs) Um, Yeah, for the reach, I've got instant uh, duration scale and then plus three. So it applies to spell casting rolls. I also need another one, I believe, to switch it to a potency spell, not a duration spell. So you can get three and not just it would just be one otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's by potency. Um, okay, but that so that's does mean. Because you, did you take advanced duration? Yes. Okay, so that'll last for an hour for a scene. Okay. So seven total uh, for reach of two. So that brings us down to five. And then what yantras are you using? I'm using my magical tool and my shadow name. Okay. So that takes it down by two. So it's over by three. Mm-hmm. 
Can I just spend three mana? Mm-hmm. Uh, or it, no, there's a limit, right? It's per turn. So if you spend a couple turns to do it, you can. You can okay, spend. then yeah. Okay, so down to chance die. Cool. And that is my last willpower, so I hope this works. <laughs> you got a pretty good pool here. You got five, uh, seven, twelve. You got ten dice. I failed at eight earlier. <laughs> Not dwell on the past. Three. Wow, three. Okay. Yep. Good enough. Don't account the why. Ten to. Yep. So for the next hour, three rolls, you can add. Plus three. Plus three potent. Plus three to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not plus cool. three potency. <laughs> cool. And it applies to spells. Right. And then no untrained stuff either. Um, are there um, resonant conditions in the area? Um, yeah. To go along with these things? Uh, notably, I think that is probably the other thing that stands out the most is that most areas that you've seen out in the wilderness and stuff like that where people haven't been, um, you just get like resonant stuff like rocky stone, things sure. like that. This whole area, which has a very weirdly um, man-made feeling border to the residents of anger. Yeah. Um, and to the point of it's actually I, I, now that I think about it, I'm going to override my prior some prior notes I had. And yeah, it seems to have overridden um, all the residents within the area. So the only resonance within the orders of your initial spell is anger. Um, so a lot of the storm spirits that you saw on the way in order the camp, but are not stepping foot in because there's no resonance for them. Um, none of the smaller spirits seem to give a fuck. They're like, there's plenty of resonance out over here. You guys keep writing on. Like it was going to cast a spell. Cast a spell. All right, write them up. I think we had the scale of the spell at uh, advanced minus four. Last mm-hmm. time. Yeah, because we hadn't stepped into the, the really large areas. Mm. going to try to sort of excise that check them off resonant condition at the very least cut off their food right. source <laughs> or one of them that space i want spirit and these are just the like the little chaos abyssal spirits you're trying to affect or you're trying to seal off the resonance from anything I'm trying to see well, erase the resident condition of anger right. from yeah, the area. The road residence that you pick a specific condition. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. lasting. Which is really funny because it's lasting, but it's also a duration spell. <laughs> uh, it's because of the reach condition. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Cool. Makes sense. And scale. All right. Uh, two overreach. No, oh, I'm actually, yeah, I don't. So I only need one overreach actually, because I'm not going to use that reach clause because I thought the last thing was under there. Catch it. Cool. <laughs> thought it was suppressed and then gotcha. delete it with a reach, but a whopping one. So just one, one die. Hey, look at that paradox for that wisdom. I saw those two ones pop up initially, and I was like, oh no. Okay, we're good. Yeah, we'll be all right. And uh, five, one, seven dice. Mm-hmm. And then what does this look like? This is. Oh, let's roll it first. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it should be fine, but then. Cool. Two successes. Um, yeah, I think the Imago for this is. Um. Like 
reaching reaching down from like in the sky like in the clouds and just scooping with like giant hands, hands just scooping yeah exactly like scooping up and just like crushing the thing that you don't want cool. there all right uh yeah and fortunately that goes off um the resonant condition immediately starts to evaporate um i guess for your eyes only um but the anger spirits within you know which previously had just been roaming and just having a grand old time um now suddenly start to leap onto people and trying to find the ones that actually are angry um so the spirits themselves are still around but um if you know things can be soothed um might eventually you know calm down and starve them out and ralph is cast and who's the boss yeah all right who's the subject of this improvised spell it is advanced scale the reach is for sensory range instant cast and advanced scale from the distance we are out into the camp and taking advantage of course of the out is first legacy attainment mm -hmm. the space application to allow him to extend his sensory range so anyway um it is a conjunctional mind space because i'm trying to find where a specific mind is that thinks of itself as the boss mm -hmm. i dig it cool and the the uh increased spell factor for scale is based on my assumption that you might consider the camp the size of a large warehouse or supermarket but i i'm happy to adjust it um, up or down, depending upon what makes more sense to you. Because you said, did you take advanced scale? I did. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the three reaches. Oh yeah. So it, advanced um, scale, sensory range. Yeah, that, and instant that covers cast. the whole area that I just got. Yeah, minus four is yeah the same. Yep. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't notice that that spell factor penalty in your template. Thank you. Great. Perfect. So then I will cast with eight dice. Yep. Ooh, wow. Nope. We're doing great tonight. <laughs> hmm. I'm doing just fine. Well, considering it says we're riding up, I'm going to do it again. Um, before you do uh, you that, can also add plus three if you, you want. But yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Okay. Yeah. yeah thank you. You did tell me that. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Whoa. <laughs> so oh, my God. <laughs> Zero eight, on eight. eight dice. Four on yeah, three. So, so for, for podcast folks, we have eight dice, zero successes. Throw three more at it. Get four successes. <laughs> That's real good. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So can't this bullshit right there. Um, cool. Um, this being both a space and mind spell. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, let me turn that around. Um, is this a mind spell with space or is this a space spell with mind? Mm. A mind spell with space. Okay, cool. So, yes, uh, immediately there are... Well, actually, what's the Imago look like? Because then I can... The Imago of... is... Sure, sure, sure. Um, the only link in the chain that Isabel still has... Oh, no, sorry. That we have to this guy um, is the what he thinks of himself. So that's rooted in his soul and his identity. And so, like, there, there are chains connecting everyone, right? Like, with things of connection, especially mental connection... And sometimes those are illusory. You don't know them yet. So what he does is he takes his cane, like in his mind, the Imago is taking the Legba cane and tapping a link that is uh, nascent on him mm -hmm. and listening to the rattle as it proceeds out from him. Cool. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to jump in uh, because Go I, ahead. I and there are the various chains connecting all the folks here in the camp. And in your mind, there is one hand gripping hold of them. Uh, they're cool. still in the center of the camp. Um, and you get a name uh, that comes across. Make sure. Yeah, Salazar. Uh, Salazar. Yes. Uh, All right. And yeah, standing in the middle near the near the fire. Uh, mm. Uh, All right. Um, sorry, go ahead. Mm. Ooh. Oh, 
this is good. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Uh, Isabel tries to communicate the fact that she is like cut off the food source for some weird spirits that are here. Oh, okay, cool. Does this possibly have to do with the mm -hmm. abyss? So and they'll dry up? Provided we solve the rest of it, yes. We can solve the rest of it by capturing Salazar without any um, precursor or preamble. Sure. That's what Cloak says. Just like who sells her. I imagine that when Cloak says it, the, there's the resonance to, oh yeah, that's the boss guy. <laughs> so now Cloak is trying to weigh something in his mind. And this would be a uh, an opportunity for a short bit of table talk. Drew. Now that I have Salazar's name... And I am physically in uh, near the camp. Would I be able to navigating outside of Purgatory Bluff in the astral try and find Salazar or where people are talking about Salazar? Um, you would have to navigate to find him. Um, yeah. or And that's and you're talking about a person that people obviously are talking about because they're the boss, but probably is a goetic entity that's represented somewhere so you might have to start hopping places to go find it it's not like there's going to be a direct link directly to purgatory bluff so she says purgatory bluff has no idea you know and has, right. has currently because you guys are keeping everything separated has no idea mm -hmm. anything about that so okay cool so then uh cloak says this and then um we can all decide what we're gonna do he says I think we have two options. We are here and we can capture him now. Or we can go to a safe distance and travel to him and capture him. Travel to him how? Well, if I have like enough three. time... Go ahead. Shadow? Twilight? No. Oh, that's a good idea. Because we need him physically, right? Yes. <laughs> just I walk just, up and on him I just had through a, Twilight. I had a terrible idea. I could just throw up a Go ghost cake. Twilight. Yeah. <laughs> he can walk there, pop up another one, yoink him into the shadow. Into the Twilight. <laughs> into the twilight. <laughs> twilight. Yoink him into Shadow's twilight. the one we don't want. Um... But uh, that's going to mess him up pretty good. Yeah, so Cloak says, uh, he says, I can create a portal that will do his mind no harm, but will only be open for a short while. And so we'd need to Oh, and we could just grab reach through, him. grab him and... Yes. Sure. That seems safest, because I don't really want to... No, he's Try to go up in this camp. He's one problem on our to-do list today. There's still cleaning up the paradox. There is. Well, that Isabel started to deal with. Yes. Isabel she definitely so took care of it. symptoms. I'm working on it. Um we need to get rid of the anger. And I'm still I'm not sure if there's actually undead creatures walking around there or not, but we can sort that out later. Yeah, so let's grab him and then we'll trust him up at least. Deal with him later. I think he is the center of the anger. And that may help. This is what Cloak says. That's not Ralph saying that. Okay. Uh, before we continue, I'm going to ask, hey, are any of the people with, Ma uh, with Prime going to turn that on? I was debating sure. it. I thought we might be Are still we too close far away. To, to see well? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Oh, yeah. yeah at this point, like, uh, you're not making out what's going on in the middle of the camp, but you can make out people close enough that Isabel was able to see that there are the anger spirits within. Um, yeah. So, yeah, definitely can make out at least the 
uh, the edge and outskirts in those like first tents and stuff like that. So you can't see Salazar and a bunch of the folks inside, but you can probably see some of the people patrolling. Yeah, if we're that close, then I want to just look at them with all my sights. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a mana turn on Prime. Mm -hmm. Same here for um, Prime Matter and Death. Cool. Uh, yeah, so flipping them on. Um, uh, fate looks like everything in here had its destinies kind of uh, get a little left hand turn. All right. Uh, yeah. Right hand turn. Let's, let's let's do a right hand turn. Um, uh, time doesn't seem all too affected. Um, death from here, you do not see like ghosts or anything like that. But this place and uh, well, actually, less the place, but the things within do have a like. I don't want to overstate it. To, to send you the wrong direction, but death has touched this place. And well, again, not the place, the things here. Um, every the tents, the people, like there is a there's a underworld e um, Stygian kind of like touch to this place. Like death clings to this, which. I'm trying to think it uh, uh, similar to the way like uh, Theo probably sees the graveyard, right? It is a place of death, not necessarily mm. that it causes death all the time, but there's no mm. death gate. There's definitely no death gate. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's like death. Death touches these people. These things um, is a close companion to them. Uh, okay. But yeah, definitely no ghosts. Um, the few people that you see moving around all no zombies have. or anything um, at this point, because like I said, you cannot see all the way through. But yeah, the folks who are walking through right here, no zombies uh, have souls, etc. cetera. Um, matter. Everything here seems ordinary um, for your prime sites. Um, you can see a big spell that created a storm. Um, or I guess actually probably the the signature nimbus because the spell itself is done, right, Chris? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see. Yeah, she pretty much released it instantly. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, God, <laughs> what I do? Oh, 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 bye. Um, <laughs> so you see the signature nimbus of. Uh, actually, I guess you wouldn't. You have to actually study the effect, but um, you can see the lingering effects of a storm spell uh, that. You guys have seen enough considering how often, you know, this is kind of Isabel's thing after all. Um, fairly recognizable. But underneath it, you can see the the paradox, uh, which for all of you, I'm sure is well, for the two of you is the first time you've ever seen paradox like this, um, but it feels the way paradox conditions, which I believe both of you have had. Um, Actually, have you both had? I have. I think I so. Don't. Yeah. I have. Has Theo? Theo. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. um, I remember, like, uh, Giza has had a wisdom megalomania condition, but I can remember about the paradox ones. But yeah, it looks the way it felt to you guys. It's a little bit, a little bit twisted up, a little bit like this doesn't belong here. I don't want it. Um, very abyssal kind of stuff. It appears to be weakening already, kind of dissolving, very uh, chalk in the rain kind of thing, where it's like, oh, I can definitely see some kid wrote a bunch of words here, and there's a hopscotch thing, and somebody drew a dick. Uh, but it's all starting to kind of, you know, wash away. Uh, but you can still see what, you know, what had been there. Um, and so it does appear to be weakening. I can turn to Theo and be like, so do you think we could scrub it? Use the prime magic to accelerate its decomposition? Decomposition? Or would that just be risking it? Um, you're prime two? I'm prime one. Okay. Yeah... That's a little, I think that's a little bit beyond me. 
Yeah, like, Ooh. I don't know if we have the skill to do it. I'm worried that we would just be risking making it worse by taking the paradox and then pushing more magic in it. Like, it seems to be going away on its own. Now, might I suggest, because uh, we haven't done it too much, but this is actually a pretty decent... Now, I don't know if this is now when you want to do it, but it's also a decent time to actually, like, study a paradox. To, yeah. Scrutinize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think right now is ideal, but I, I want to... Yeah, especially with 100... If we can deal with the guys. Well, 30 people in the area. So... First things first, let's grab the dude and um, wrap him up. Then that's... That's a fairly straightforward problem that I think we can all agree on how to solve. And then we can tackle number two after that's taken care of. Cool. I'm curious as to what taking him will do for the rest of them. And it, that may be like the, you know, unraveling the knot that has the whole thing fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> Only one way to find out. And I feel like we, I feel like we need him. For various definitions of need, I'll, I'll, I'll agree. Cool. Um, in that case, uh, that'll be where we go on a break. Um, that'll give you guys also a little chance to figure out what your out of character plan is. Um, and uh, I can get more coffee. Uh, cool. So, Twitch folks, we're all going to get a snack. We'll be back in like two, three minutes. So, get up, walk, move, touch grass, get outside, um, go to the bathroom. Uh, you two guys will be back in a blink. Oh, yeah, I guess we did just kind of leave off with you guys having a quick discussion on your plans. And so I, it sounds like the plan is co-locate to snatch a Salazar. Yep, we're going to eat his breakfast, eat his Rice Krispies. Sure. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So which, I pull out my gun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and your plan here uh, is for Legba to use the attainment. Yes, exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so because otherwise it breaks his mind. Right. Um, cool. Well, could break his mind. Yeah, that's right. Could that's true. Yeah. Um, so in this what particular, the fuck was that oh my god, what are you? Oh, really? <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe he's cool with teleportation. <laughs> that's right. It's just a thing that happens sometimes. <laughs> that's hilarious. I would love that if that were the case. That's hilarious, Ash. Maybe he's cool with it. <laughs> All right. So, no big deal. This happened last week. <laughs> it's actually what's happening with all the, the kidnapped or the people that never come back or failed teleportation experiments. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, to use your legacy attainment, uh, yes. you do need to find the uh, Temenos representation of the place. Yes, uh, that's right. So uh, which, you know, funnily enough, uh, while you've been over here paying attention to what's going on and specifically the spell casting the astral world is kind of just sitting back there in the back of your mind un untended um yeah. to which you know you return your attentions back to it and there's this dog um tapping his toes tapping his watch going hey uh what's going on here um <laughs> Yes, you should imagine a dog wearing a watch. And like uh, the awesome. um, the dog kind of looks as your attention kind of comes back um, and he kind of looks at you and says, I have found him. Take me to him. Or rather, no, he first says, thank you. Take me to him. Nods and you see a big, gnarly... Uh, sheep dog collar you know big old spikes on it uh, you know uh not not some dinky little hot topic one uh mm. and a big heavy like belt leash um appears in your hand and uh, it very clearly this dog is walking you um, oh, yeah. kind of stride forward um and pulls you from purgatory bluff into Well, I guess you don't immediately recognize it. You can name it whatever you want. But it is these large kind of hills and valleys and stuff like that. Um, out of character, in my head, it is the Great Plains. Oh, cool. Um, and it seems to, from your vantage point 
on this hill that you step out onto, it goes forever. Um, and you have that sense, you know, throwing a little space vibe to it, right? It just, it keeps going. There's just so much out here and endless expanse, but also absolutely nothing out here except in mm. places. Um, oh, cool. And the dog having just drawn you to a specific place, you are looking down at this camp. Uh, you're very clearly not in a, you know, in the, in the way the shadow works, where it is a mirror to this realm, but you are looking down from a hill onto this camp, um, mm. which from your vantage point up on a, you know, tallish hill, you can see laid out in absolute haphazard kind of way. And even as you watch it, the tents shift and suddenly some are gone and rearranged and it is this like continual flux, but it is recognizable cool. as the same camp. And so this is the the camp that nobody can basically agree on wh whose tent should go uh. where and, and stuff like that. But you can recognize sitting in the middle is this large bonfire. And then what um, would be a command tent that based on what Gisela has told you is actually where the hostages are put and they seem to always be there in the center. Uh, yeah. the dog kind of looks at you. This is where he is. Um, notably, looking down there, you do not see any actual like Goetia people moving mm -hmm. about. Um, this place seems to uh, reside. Well, there may be a Goetia in there of this particular camp, but there doesn't seem to be any like people within it. Um, but yeah. Interesting. That makes sense to me. <laughs> Megma says, thank you. Nods, says, good. Like and the, he says, yes. And he says, um, <clears throat> as you should know, Legba is sometimes generous. Call upon me if you need something. Oh, I consider this a favor owed. And then, like, turns and just walks off the leash and collar gone. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm glad we had an understanding. Cool. Then, uh, Legba looks at the fact that the command tent is fixed. There's a couple other pieces that seem kind of fixed, like, uh, the... Horse line is always seems to be on one side away from that command tent. There's a couple other things gotcha. that seem fairly fixed, but. Okay, yeah. cool. So then um, after casting, who's the boss, right? Mm -hmm. Did I get an understanding of where he was in space? Uh, yeah, be between Gisela's story, what Isabel saw when <laughs> casting the spell and seeing uh, who you imagine is Salazar shooting a yeah. guy. Dude seems to live in this center section. Okay, cool. Great. Where he, you know, directs everything. Mm -hmm. And when I casted that spell, did he, was he in the center section? Mm -hmm. like I know where yeah, he that, is, right? That hand reached up. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. Okay. Perfect. So then, um, you, Legba turns his head to you all, right? It seems like he kind of like ignored you for a little bit and then says, I believe I'm ready. Okay. And you will have, if I remember correctly, because it's based off, oh yeah, mind or space. So three turns. Yes. So what are... We oh wait, let's see. It might be, is it three or is it mm -hmm. four? Cause I can't remember. Because it's based on your uh, dots. Oh, you're uh, talking about duration. Yeah, it's... It's uh, it's, it's, it's the number, it is extra spell factors, right? right. Or, so wait, is collocation a duration spell? It is. Oh, okay, so then it would be three ranks, and I think that might be four turns. Uh, one, two, look. three, five. Okay, is it five turns? Oh, cool. But it goes. Oh wait, because you would have space no, three, so it is three turns. Three standard turns. duration yep. is three turns. Yeah, that's right. I was trying to remember when it when it jumped up. Yep. Because it skip, you know, it skips from four to five. I Prime wasn't sure which was. That's right. So oh, we bring him right. here. Cool. Yep. Um, we need to find a safe place where we're going to bring him. We have two options, uh, one of which I find safer and less hubristic than the other. 
That first option is we travel a distance away so that they don't know where we are. And we take him there. The other option is, which isn't mutually exclusive with the first, is that Theo were to create a pit in the ground and we place him inside it. Has to be open, I presume? Yes. And yeah, drop him in it. I mean... Well, I just need I to see the focus. inside. Things. Like so getting far it... away so they can't see us. And then if you want to put him in a pit, sure. Do you think we can take him otherwise? There are four oh. of us. <laughs> Isabel flexes. <laughs> he, he won't escape. Yeah, I've I mean, done this before. The, if you don't think the dropping him in a pit's necessary, that's fine. I do like the get far away so that we're safer. Then we should choose a convenient place, whether that's here or near to town. I mean, I'd like to still be able to see what's happening here. Mm. I don't think very far away from here. Mm. And you've got various hills, ridge lines, some stuff like that. So you guys can find it. He's not going to be able to yell over top of the storm. Mm -mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just, um, we should like be prepared. We're all probably having to be pretty loud to hear each yeah, other. Yeah, well, and I imagine so. you guys have brought your horses we close have and stuff. telepathy, yeah. right? Telepathy oh, is yeah. just between Legba oh, okay. and... just between him. Yeah, telepathy uh, doesn't have enough... Not yet. Yeah, I was just saying need four to be able to get. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you guys easily find a, a you know, spot that's uh, actually <laughs> Giza's like, I remember this little hill that I poked my head around uh, and, and takes you back over there um, where you guys have a decent spot to kind of look out towards the camp, but have some actual cover from a hillside. Cool. Um, a note, just because, so we're all yeah. on the same page. Portal is opening, but he is not forced in any way to walk through it. So somebody is going sure. to have to grab him and draw him back through. Yeah, Legba is going to have to grab him. Okay. Good thing he keeps a chain with him at all times. That guy's getting the old throat choke. All uh, right. A, are all players good? Let's see nods. So, um, mm -hmm. just quick question: If I'm making a pit with shaping, that's the effect of basically lasting until it caves in or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't need duration. Nope, duration is just how long you want it to be actively being reshaped and stuff. It's it's, it's really one of my favorite effects in Magic and Awakening. It's so cool. It's so great. It's convenient. It's, it's very it's awesome. mage. It's awesome. It's so good. Yeah, it's if so it, cool. If it if it's solid. <laughs> I don't think this really fits into the Baba Sarah mm, shadow name. It's a bit bit out there. Uh, although I I am I am burying him. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're gonna leave it liquid and then he drops in, solidify <laughs> its heads um, out. <laughs> That's more so change state, you, but yeah. Uh, oh, I that's can use right, my yeah. um, my bone dagger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the and probably more as a rod than as a weapon, but yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant mm -hmm. as a rod. Um, so do I get a bonus one from that, or is it just the yeah, one plus one? Um, do I want to use my rolls? No, not yet. Uh, at this point, I would say, because now you've made a plan on what you're doing, I don't know that Fool's Russian uh, necessarily applies. Now, that said, keep the effect running, because if suddenly things do go awry and off plan, it would then start to apply again. But at this point, you guys definitely had a discussion of, we're going to grab them and throw them into a pit. Yeah. All right. Uh, no overreach. So eight dice. Um, now, a note. Uh, it'll be fine, uh, but you have a because that's a small scale, so you have n not a lot of space to work with. Um, yeah. Uh, it's cast an advanced scale. Oh, advanced scale. OK, cool. I did yep. advanced scale, we're, yeah. we're good. Yep. Yep. That's plenty of scale. 
Chris, don't throw. Right, so we have a handy pit. So wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, All right, cool. Yeah. Whoosh. Um, is it, you know, how, how, what kind of pit are we talking about? Does this look like a big natural deformation or does sharp sides and... No, it's definitely like somebody dug a grave. Cool. Except it's a big grave because um, <laughs> I don't want him to be able to walk, spider walk up the sides or something by bracing himself. Gotcha. Awesome. And control instincts is being cast on. Uh, I'm. It's a. Brett. We'll call it a preparatory sure. template. Yeah. No, that's fine. In case I decide to use this. Okay. Cool. So with a snap of a finger. Yeah. All right. Cool. Sweet. Then, uh, like, I was going to approach the that tent. Just get a little closer. In, in the astral space. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, in the Timenos, right? And focus on it. And then he's going to conjure in his mind what he wants to happen so that his actions in the fallen world are congruent with what's happening in the astral realms. And in his mind, he is going to focus on the guy and where he is. And he's going to conjure a portal right behind him. Sure. And then he's going to reach out with uh, a chain and wrap it around his neck and yank him through. <laughs> okay. Those are definitely two different actions. Uh, oh, okay. But, yeah, well, no, then, then, he would, then he would grab him with his hands instead of using well, a chain. No, I'm talking about making the portal. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, Sounds good. Perfect. So, Great. Yeah. Portal opens up. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you are close to him you can see him you are unfortunately not right behind him just because you're fine right uh you're dropping it in you can see salazar yelling in um spanish at mm. people uh yeah. notably for isabel you can see the man he had shot standing there uh looks alive looks fine um which mm -hmm. um because uh, we can see through the portal. Yeah, it is. Uh, oh, yeah. It is a complete. Yeah, there's <laughs> this thing actually has all the required reach for uh, anybody can use it and see through it. Sleepers can see it and see through it, uh, which does mean that as Salazar is kind of looking around and sees, I imagine what I don't imagine any funky f glowy <laughs> edges or anything. Just a just absolutely surreal just away. Yeah. Just a different space. Just there, you know, in a 2D plane, uh, you all are able to see through. Um, do we have uh, Mace Light up for anybody? I got... Um, ooh, that's right. I had it up briefly. I'm trying to remember if I kept it up. at this. Well, at this point, because you've moved and stuff like that. You know, this yeah. Is, I, this is about I we can drop it reflexively, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you only have to pay mana for the Yeah, still be up. Okay. You need a willpower to keep it up for a scene. Right. But in this case you guys could turn it off, turn it back on. Oh, turn it back on, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um cool. Uh so yeah, notably in uh Theo's case you can see everybody here seems to have their souls. Um mm -hmm. so guy who was shot who you can kinda guess might be the guy who has a well, at this point now, the blood is probably gone, um, but was shot in the head. Um, I'm trying to think of anything. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, actually, Isabel has um, side on. OK, cool. You can see the anger spirits. The thing that stands out to you is the life um, effect that seems to be on the man who was shot. It doesn't look. But it doesn't look like anything that you could pull off um, at life two. Um, it also doesn't. Well, actually, yeah. But it definitely seems to be some kind of bolstering, uh, regenerative, healing kind of thing. Um, bum 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 bum. Uh, and Gisela would probably also spot the. 
twist in this particular guy's fate. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like, if his fate's been readjusted. Mm -hmm. Um, For Ralph, obviously, you see a hole in space. Uh, Mines, everything looks normal um, in terms of everybody's thinking mines. Uh, But you all definitely have a, like, head turn from Salazar, who is at this point now looking towards the portal, which Mm, is open now for round one. Yep. Everybody He's roll initiative. Ambushed. Yep. <laughs> Stupid mouse. Oh, quick, delete everybody. There we go. Cool. We still have tokens on the board. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Quick. They should be Where? named now for all of you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. This is be a real 15. Problem. Dang. Okay. Get my character sheet back up. Two, three. And that does have your fast reflexes in. Awesome. What? Is that right? Uh huh. Do you? Yeah. You got a high composure. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. yeah and you a rolled lot of words there I wasn't expecting. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, it shows the stuff that have zeros, but yeah. doesn't show, because like, if you look at Gizla's, doesn't show that she actually has fast reflexes. Sweet. Everybody else says, zero fast reflexes. Who is Jean-Paul? Yeah, Paul? that's really weird. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Okay, I'm trying to think of what I would do to grab this guy, because um, I mean, you don't necessarily need to. You're just at the top of the initiative. If you wait for, you, you know, Jean-Paul, stuff. that's totally fine. Totally fine. Yep. Nobody has to wait for me. Yep. They don't want to. Um, <laughs> I appreciate... So I, I imagine for Jean-Paul, this is it opens and was expecting this to be right behind the guy. And there's that yeah. pause of like, uh, new plan, new plan, new plan. Yep, yep. Uh, but yeah, so Gizla. Can you use your fool's Russian dots now? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I, appreci- I appreciate the attempt. <laughs> um, but yeah, that said, does Arachne uh, do anything? Uh, I'm trying to decide. I wasn't expecting to be the... The first one. <laughs> Lodestone on his clothes. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> yeah, look at y'all rolling so well. It's awesome yeah, to see. I don't know. Okay. I mean, it's 100%. I mean, uh, Rackney wasn't necessarily like planning to do anything. So it makes sense if you just don't go. Uh, yeah. This is mostly um, for their initiative, really. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna not do anything right now while I'm just like, shit. I was expecting him to just get snatched through. Right. Cool. Uh, Theo? Hi, I'm working on a quick spell. Okay. And since Isabel is also going at the same time. Yep. Uh, yeah, she's gonna, she's gonna crack off her spell okay. and try and influence this person gotcha and so is on salazar okay Mm -hmm. um the idea is to uh calm him and make him inquisitive rather than Mm. angry and violent i dig that okay cool um so three of and like have myself be just enough in the view of the portal it's like no come here let me play you a song uh, or sing you a like song. almost kind of siren yes, that's exactly yeah. where I was going um, so three overreach um, dun, 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 dun. what yantras are you using um, my uh, my gun okay my, my uh, the soul stone gotcha so uh, wait does soul, using your soul stone do anything for paradox Counts as a dedicated yeah. magical tool, right? Yeah, it yeah, automatically okay, counts yeah. as a dedicated magical tool. If you dedicate it, then you get a minus three. Right, paradox. minus three instead of two. Cool. Yeah. All right, so... Oh, this is your own chill zone. One paradox, and then two, four... Four dice. That's uh, three... Three potency does it is it a potency spell? It's a duration. Okay, spell. cool. So four so. four potency four uh, cool and yeah you, you watch composure hmm? versus composure. Okay, 
Uh, perfect. Uh, and then Theo. Perfect. Yeah. Alter integrity. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, um, well, there's a bit of explanation here. Sure. I want to make his clothes like everything's wearing a lot more rigid. Oh, Ooh, cool. Okay. That's so, great. like, his shirt Wait, is becoming solid. So, I'm trying to. <laughs> now, and I don't, I don't. Maybe that's a little too OP, but at the very least, can I give him a penalty on all his actions equivalent to the potency of the spell? No, I. Yeah. No, Anything that requires movement? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Just because all of a sudden his clothes are not uh, shifting with him. It's not quite integrity, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you here. Yeah. 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 Um, cool. Uh, what are we doing about Overreaching the... by two. Mm -hmm. I will spend two mana. Okay. I don't want to provoke paradox in the middle of a paradox. <laughs> yeah, Seems like a bad idea. We're never going to get arcane beats like that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Nothing happens there. So uh, five, uh, 11 dice. Yeah. One success. One success. So, yeah. Um, yeah, nothing outwardly seems to happen, uh, but you definitely feel the spell take hold, which actually works out really well because he's got a initiative of 10. Um, and you watch as he draws his gun um, with the intent to point it out at you and seems to be fighting his nice, you know, clothes and just like looks at it and then sh about that time, like instead of the gun, you know, shoving forward and like just kind of head tilt and like the gun is drawn and kind of to the side and then kind of this half walk forward of like what is going on um about the same time other folks are kind of looking around and noticing oh what's the boss looking at because if you're looking at it from the side there's almost nothing to see and if you're looking at it from the backside, there's literally nothing to see you need to be looking from his perspective so there's basically him and the guy who would shot previously who are there which brings us to jean paul he is about like a pace, maybe two from the uh, from the uh, co-location. Cool, great. So Jean Paul is going to do what he's done many times before, and this is more Jean Paul than the cloak, right? right? The cloak is going to do it. Um, uh, he's going to rush up, and uh, let's see. He's facing us, and he has a gun. So let's see what is this? How is going to look? Well. Um, Yeah, he's going to rush up and try and get him into um, a hold where... Oh, he's going to get him in a half Nelson where his arm is up with the gun and there's a chain um, around his neck. Sure. So there's a chain under his armpit uh, and around his neck and crossed. So Jean Paul has his hands like this grasping either end of the, the chain gotcha. at the end of the maneuver. All right. Normally... What's his defense? Right. I was saying, normally, this guy has a defense of six. He's going to get a penalty to that because of his clothes. And this is where uh, we're really getting cool. into that alter integrity where it's just fighting. So he has a defense of four now. Gotcha. Actually, what was the potency right, cool. that you had on alter integrity? Three. He has a defense of three. Okay, uh, great. That's well, helpful. I don't think you'll need it, but I did realize what I could do. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Superlative luck to... um. Give you a bonus to like the physical mm -hmm. snatching of this guy. Yep. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So I'm going to spend a willpower to make this a road action. Take a, he said his defense is now three. Mm -hmm. So I take a penalty of three. And if I get at least one success, I get one additional success because of strength performance four. Can he pull the exceptional off? Just short. No. Yep. So, but um, he takes three damage. Okay. Yeah. Because of clinch strike. Mm -hmm. Takes the damage, uh, is grappled. And, then, and the move I execute yeah. is... Uh, you would only get to do that if you got an exceptional... Oh, is there in contested rolls? That's right. Cool. Right. Yeah, good. Yep. Okay. Cool. Done. Good stuff. It's my turn. Uh, yep. after him oh and I'll activate space armor okay yep well I'll, I'll wait I'll do it reflexively in the event somebody attacks me sure cool thanks um, after his turn is the guy standing next to him who mm -hmm. looks about as equally the fuck is going on and as Legba comes out at him um, mm -hmm. doesn't even 
draw his gun, it just goes for like a bear hug grab. You know, you're not taking the boss kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had that plan. I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. I'm like, how do I adjudicate that? Um, Actually, yeah. Oh, like a contested graphic? Yeah, I think actually that's exactly. It can be in a group role. It's like chained. You can grapple people who are grappled. Work on you then for this. Um. Hmm. If you've casted it, yeah. Technically, past your turn, but I'm kind of okay with it. Um. Yeah. Oh, I, you delayed your turn. Sure. I held action. <laughs> cool. Uh, but yeah, I think it only needs the one reach for instant. Like oh, sensory range because you're not beside me anymore. Unless you want to throw it. But that's just one reach. Uh, no, I'll just do that. Okay. I can. And for the Yantra, I had. You can only use one Yantra because you're doing it instantly. Oh, it's only two um, for the the Shadow Name Cabal. Okay, so I will roll. I'll spin to mana. Chance die. Nothing. And you will roll. Um, and the spell cost a mana. Okay. Um, but you have Gnosis 2, so that's fine. So I roll a 7. Right. Mm hmm. Hey. Good enough. Yep. Uh, cool. Oh, so you have, uh, I believe it's three rolls. It's a duration spell. Oh, okay. So you got one lucky roll. Uh, you get the rope quality on one roll, which would be this one, probably. Well, you've got, because it's uh, duration, so you've got three turns to use it. Okay. Yep. Sweet. Um, so yeah, this guy know is what I'm gonna do. going to contest your grapple. Um, uh, he's going to try and win the grapple, even though he's joining in on it. Effectively. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Hmm. Yeah. We have, a, we have a three person grapple is kind of the way I'm looking at this. Cause I mean, okay. Do, 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 do. Sounds good. And that should be just strength plus brawl, right? Where's our yes. grapple stuff? But, um, if this is contested, then I think, uh, Defense isn't going to apply. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, this is... am I? Do you want me to roll again? Yes. Yeah. New strength okay, plus cool. roll because all three of you are going Great. to roll. Um, all right. Excellent. So, and then, oh, in the next turn, I see. Okay. Uh, so now this is the next round, or yeah, kind of. This is him joining in. Yeah. And so I'm just going to have just trying to make sure. Yeah, I'm basically I'm good because uh, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to have this guy roll to see if he can get hold. But if he doesn't get an exceptional, all he's doing is just getting in there. Um, OK, so if he, you're saying if he succeeds then he gets in the grapple and the next round, we figure out what will happen based right. on everyone. OK, mm -hmm. cool. Great. Yeah, because so I he make does, a roll against him. Yeah, because right. uh, basically that would be you just getting that foot over and, you know, kicking him away and not letting him get yeah. involved. Uh, All right, fantastic. Then I am not going to use this superlatively luck yet because I want to be able to double it up with a willpower expenditure on another roll. Right. So I am going to spend another willpower. So I'm really glad uh, I have willpower. If I still had <laughs> dominant as a virtue, Ooh, that this would definitely have one. Uh, yeah. uh, two successes on a strengthless so, roll. Great, so I'm rolling Strength Brawl with no penalties and rote. Cool. Cool, yeah. So basically oh, I didn't click rote. I didn't click rote last time either. Oh, man, <laughs> that's too bad. Cool. I wondered about that. I didn't see the RO. I yeah, just thought that was the thing. it wasn't was there. Out. Regardless, <laughs> we'll you still got three successes. So, yep. yeah, the this other guy basically gets a shove or a kick or however you'd like to flavor it. And oh, I got four, back. actually, but yeah. Right. Because that's... But yeah, yeah. Cool. which does bring us around back to the top of the initiative. We're not doing yep. the compose just yet. Uh, we have mm -hmm. Gisela back at the top of the initiative. Yes, exactly. I kind of want to do something mean. I believe that um, is one of your aspirations. It is. Uh, <laughs> That's great. I'm just trying to decide. I was going to do um, a grave misfortune. Like, basically, to try mm. to help knock this guy out. So mm. if you hurt him again, that will do extra mm -hmm. damage. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. 
I'm going to cue this. I'm going to be very careful with how I, how I choose moves. <laughs> uh, and while, since we know what Gisela is doing, we'll just let her roll at her uh, leisure, Theo and Isabel. Are you guys going to do, or are you guys waiting to see how this turns out? Let me delay your initiative. I'm going <laughs> to satisfy my curiosity in the life magic in the best way how. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot him. Shooting which guy? See he, the guy that got back up once already. Oh He's got the shit. Life spell on him. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if it happens again. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Yeah. And Theo? Um, I don't so the guy has like a bullet wound in his head. He he had it is now cleared off, and oh, okay. you you would have no idea that he had been shot in the head. Um, okay. It is only Isabel that has that very distinct memory. That is definitely the guy so, I saw get shot in the head and stand back up. <laughs> for a magical tool, for the needle, does it count as a weapon? It could, if you if you envision huh. this as 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 a as a dangerous weapon. Yeah, so the entre bonus on that is it one or two? It's just one. One, okay. Yeah, Yantra tools, generally speaking, are kind of weak as Yantras by themselves, but giving you the nine again or eight again or whichever it is ends up being the big thing. Cool. Uh two overreach, which is an additional overreach. Um or not an additional. Using a magical tool, it reduces it by two. Cool. Um, and you've provoked Paradox. Actually, no, no, you haven't. Yeah. Um, cool. So just We're all avoiding it. So what is that number? Oh, I'm sorry, just one. Four. Yep. Okay. Um, I think this is how it works. From minus two potency, it increases the damage by three. Potency by one. I, well, I was trying to make it so that it would get past his composure. That's the uh, one I was trying to go for. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, yeah, because I forgot that does have the... Uh, yeah, I don't want to up the damage, but I want it to bypass. Right. So is there a way to do that? Uh, you you just have to beat his withstand. Yeah, there, there's no way to basically you determine how much oomph it has, and then it's going to get whittled down by their composure. So you without knowing what his composure is and grave misfortune, like it does extra damage based on the potency that goes over it so if okay it, well so if he has it's potency four then right okay. now so so if he has a, a, a composure of four it's not going to do anything if he has a composure of three it's going to increase okay. damage by one so you're not not going to have to be too concerned about just blowing it out of the water okay <laughs> four dice four successes sure um yeah, so that settles on, and that was a potency of four, right? Okay. Potency four, yeah. Cool. Just for... And I wouldn't know if it works, you right? You know that it works because the spell landed, but you don't necessarily know how much potency it has. Uh, mm -hmm. I will tell you out of character, he has a composure of three. So any damage... Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like that's yeah, something... Yeah, I just meant like if it... Um... Knowing if it had actually gotten through at all, you know. Right. Uh, I do not believe so. Uh, that would be a thing that you would know in character that whether or not it has any potency, you just because the spell exists, how much it affects is on them. I'm just letting you know out of character that it does. Okay. Now, that said, when more damage is done, I think that's when you would, especially because you have Mage Sight on, you would actually be like, ah, is my spell working? Well, I, I would imagine reaches were um, instant duration range. Okay. So it's good for a couple turns couple turns yeah now what are you saying chris um i would imagine in the case of you casting a spell on them on someone but their attribute reduces the potency to zero the spell is still on mm -hmm. them so you'd you'd realize that the spell was still there because you can you know spell see control. your own spells yeah. you just would probably realize that it's not doing anything uh, oh, and we are waiting on a thank you. <laughs> a bang. Um, and this was directed at the guy who's wounded. Obviously, no defense is going to apply to him. Uh, or is it? It doesn't. I don't, I don't know about yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but yeah, you watch as he he catches a bullet, you know, uh, with, with 
with just the one success, I imagine, you know, it's just a body shot. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what it should be. Uh, for. That's true, because it'd be a cold shot otherwise. Uh, yeah, no. and this guy gets hit in the chest. Uh, I imagine he's already kind of on the ground from Legba's, you know, kick or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. He gets hit in the chest and starts grabbing at his wound. Um, and there's a gurgling like, well, not gurgling. I don't think he's dying just yet. More shoulder wound. Uh, but yeah, I think there's a pronounced fuck Salazar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and like a, a hand reaches out towards the boss, uh, which brings us around to initiative of 10, where Salazar is now going to grapple with John Paul. Uh, That's right. But we're on initiative seven because his clothes reduces initiative. I mean, point of order. Oh, sure. I, I didn't actually act that round. No, oh, you need to act now. At the same time as Isabel, right? Oh, dude. When when yeah, Ash so cast this round, this, you have this yeah. fortune, I was like, oh, yeah, there's the Acanthus. <laughs> yeah, please, Craig. <laughs> um, kind of out of my element, <laughs> but uh, Isabel's shooting at the dude. I think I'm going to um, try and give him a smack upside the head. Sure. Uh, give it a shot. Strength and brawl, right? Are you stepping through the portal? You go through the portal? Oh, maybe I'm not stepping through the portal. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good idea. I don't want to get stuck on the other side, right? Uh, nope. Because uh, this, is, this is round two of three. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> it's going away after next ter- next round. <laughs> All right. Um... <laughs> Doing a quick and dirty death. Decay. To do... At the guy that uh, Isabel shot. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Yeah, that's... Let's see here. Um, So death three. So... Yeah, because you're we're we're gonna because that's not one that we can just quick and dirty. Okay, Um, but it's it's fine because we can do the math. You can do direct damage spells, so you just do three damage. Yeah. Three, three bashing. Uh, the issue here is more the paradox. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that's right. Instant and he don't, he instant and sensory would be yeah. Uh, instant and sensory, right. and I've got two reach. So because you have one reach, because it's yeah, death, death three. three. Oh, right. yeah. If you're Which, a master, and, okay, yeah, and that yeah, said, do it up. I, that that you don't have to write it up. I was just we're just going to okay. roll a paradox. Yeah. Because if you, okay. Yeah, cool. cool. So, oh, right. yeah, and it does, yeah, as you said, three potents, uh, three bashing. bashing. Uh, yep. Um, which, yeah, after after the after the gunshot, like, okay, this sucks, but it's not nearly as bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, parts of his, you know, fingers kind of turn. Actually, I imagine that the the bullet wound starts to like get a little Necro, nastier yeah, a little and yeah. necrosis around it yeah yep. separate yep okay so now we get into at initiative 10 because i just don't have the guy on here uh mm-hmm. we get into the strength Initial. versus uh strength plus yep. brawl so i'm spending uh my penultimate willpower and taking advantage of the, the mm-hmm. superlative luck so this will be rolling without penalties and with the plus three bonus at rote and i have checked rote so yeah <laughs> oh wait I get one more die because of the chain oh gotcha oh sorry that's wrong sorry no, I, I should have done what I meant to do is this just the one die yep. okay. yes okay cool so it's 10 total successes so, because of strength performance and the chain right um, and he would have actually taken 4 damage before because of the chain I forgot about that. Gotcha. With the clinch strike. Um, Craig, the potency of your alter integrity was three, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, doing math in my head. Uh, he doesn't have a strong chain. Well, yeah, he is going to spend willpower. Um, Why not? Yeah. He should. Okay. So five successes versus nine, uh, ten successes. Ten, so ten obvi- successes. Yeah. Ob- obviously loses. Uh, yep. And you surpass five. He had five. ten dice after minus three? Yes. Whoa. And his willpower. This guy is 
Good. Uh, yeah. So that is uh, that basically gives you control of the grapple. Uh, gives me an exceptional success. Correct. Well, uh, on the grapple in the subsequent round, which means I can apply two, two moves. Moves. Mm -hmm. So I hold and then restrain him. So he's immobilized. Okay. And I need to do that in order to move him. Uh, Did it? Do you need damage? Uh, no, because I didn't choose the damage maneuver. Uh, hold. Neither of you can apply defense against incoming attacks, and then restrain. But once he's immobilized, yeah. And if I restrain him with a chain, then I can now. I'm no longer subject to. Oh, right. Because the... you're using grapple, you can leave the. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, mm -hmm. twist him up, tie him up. Cool. Yeah. Um, that's round two. I guess. Yeah, I guess that's true. At this point, he has no action. Yeah. That seems weird. That was his action. So? No. He can try and break free. Because um, Cloak would have had no action if he That's true. One. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, because I was thinking about casting while in a grapple. Mm, gotcha. It's like, well, hang on. That's an action to cast while grappling. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I get it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, which does bring us around to the actual last round uh, with Gizla. Yep. Um... I don't. At this point, no. uh, yeah. To to clarify, after all the 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 jumble there, we have this guy with at this now point, I imagine chains kind of tangling up his arms behind him and cloak kind of pulling, uh, yeah. but not actually made any motion yet. Can I just like start trying to grab cloak and pulling them backwards because this thing's about to close? Sure. Yeah, I, helping him drag the guy that's, out. That's what I was going to say. We'll, we'll count that as help action towards Cloak getting yeah, him out. That sounds good to me. Uh, Theo and Isabel. And yeah, like I said, because he is literally just steps away from this portal. Uh, yeah, that's basically Isabel's me reaching through and just like grabbing the back of his. <laughs> Isabel's just got her gun train over their shoulders. Okay. Cool. Else so if they're they're right beside, are they on the side of the portal or are they still on the other side? They're on the other side currently, oh, but on Ralph's. Uh, on Legba's initiative, he will then be able to move and drag this guy through. Okay, can I just do an assist? That's fine. Yeah, just, just, just like uh, just like uh, Gizla is. Bringing hands and Greg and you're, yep. you're trying to help, so just and, to give him a D bonus or something. Sure. Awesome. Uh, I'm not I'm not much of an assist, but yeah, that's fine. And Isabel, just like roll strength to see how many bonus dice you get or whatever. Right. Uh, don't necessarily do anything just yet. Uh, and then Isabel, yeah, you said you had your... so. <clears throat> Chris, you said you had your I gun. I spoke over. <laughs> man i love technology that little bit of lag time you get uh chris you point the gun at the the other guy right okay yeah that's who didn't go okay that's fine uh that's totally fine uh so theo isabel boom, 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 boom. um now at this point you have broken the grapple because he is restrained um and so you're no longer in the grapple which means he is no He's longer a He yeah. is immobilized, uh, which actually is yes. true. Let me go da, 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 yeah, so restrain. Various things. He can't do anything but wriggle helplessly. He can't apply defense against incoming attacks, and he can't take combat-related actions. Interesting. Where is that condition? It's uh, immobilized. Well, there it is. Yeah, can, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So hold some fast. Hold him down, spend a willpower to deliver a headbutt. Chain is in the way. Causing it, a little ending, can break free. Snapping whatever chains bind him. Can struggle as normal, but can only use break free. Held by an item. Strength versus athletics, penalized by the item's durability. Okay. Chain is steel or iron. But I figured be able to do that the next round, and we're acting simultaneously. Uh, you're not acting simultaneously because you've left the uh, grapple because you're using the thing. So you're dragging him uh, on your turn. On his turn, but he's... His, his, his initiative is still... Sorry, I shouldn't say simultaneously. We're acting on the same... I, I, I don't want to use the term from Exalted, but the in, same initiative tick because his initiative is penalized by Baba Sarah's spell. Babasera's spell reduced the 
or provided an effect such that he's taking a minus three penalty to all his actions mm, I'm not- as a consequence of the close. And you said that applies to initiative. Did not say that it applies to initiative. Oh, you said it applies to defense. That's right. Sorry. I was like, hey, that's where why. are we? That's yeah. why I was making the mistake. No, cool. you're great. We're, we're good. good. We're good. Go ahead. Uh, da, 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 items, traits, size, durability. I, one day I'm going to actually have this stupid page memorized. Is that under equipment? Because I've looked durability, yeah. yeah. It's, um, I'll show you. I feel like it's in such a weird spot. There it is. Okay, steel, iron, three. Okay, so it has to break the durability of three. Well, he's uh, he makes his strength of those roll penalized by the durability. I think is what it said. And then he takes a, an additional penalty depending upon how many of his limbs are uh are immobilized strength excellent penalized by durability um in this case arms and legs are both bound no um just his arms so it's at a minus two strength uh well excuse me minus uh five with the thing so strength plus athletics you know, minus five this is it seems it does never seems like a good idea to use stuff like that unless you're hmm and zip ties or something. Well, let's see how oh, zip ties work. Uh, each, because oh. the other alternative is to continue to use those items, right? As a... Uh, um, as an aid to a grapple. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, what, what's he's, going on? He's, he's taking like a minus eight to his roll. Yeah. Oh, okay. Between the alter integrity, the oh, that's right, that's a good point. Cool. And the I won't, I won't block things out. This chains. I was just yeah. trying to work through my understanding of, of why it seemed like relying on equipment to bind somebody didn't seem as effective as I thought it was. But please continue. No, you're good, good, good. Uh, I was doing math, anyways. Uh, okay, after willpower, two dice. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, locked out. But yeah, shifting, straining, uh, takes bashing damage from the attempt um, as he... So he takes one extra. Yes. Um, uh, at which point you watch him like get like thrashing in between the clinch, uh, which was four, um, mm-hmm. the bashing from this plus an additional extra. All of a sudden he's like kind of wobbling a little bit. Well, not wobble, you know, but he's kind of woozy and needing to spend willpower to take actions. Um, Jean-Paul goes, dragging him across the threshold. Um, at this point, um, he's already made his struggle. Uh, and the guy on the ground makes another yell, uh, Salazar, what are you? And then uh, away goes the portal. We need to silence him so he doesn't scream and get them over here. Because we're not that far away. Uh, with the storm, you're, you're you're pretty good. Yeah, yeah we've got a hill okay. between okay. us, right? So yeah, the hill's there, the storm is there, and you've got quite a bit of distance. Because remember, you were using um, zoom in to even see them originally. So at this point, you guys are with a storm in the way, out of visual, even if okay. you were around the hill. Um, and with that, you know, he falls you know, through the portal, and then I guess you guys drop him into a pit? Yep. Mm-hmm. How deep yeah. is that pit? In the, in the chains. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's right, falling damage. <laughs> yeah, I said, uh, oh. The Great Misfortune was only good for one attack. Okay. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so deep enough that he can't leap up and grab the edge. Okay. So, so a figure oh, wow, 10 yeah. feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, so <laughs> he's going to take a little bit of bashing damage, and you watch him <laughs> get dropped down the pit and hit the ground and then kind of roll to his side and just stop struggling. Ooh, it's one point of damage per meter fallen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, falling damage in Chronicles. How deep did you make this pit? <laughs> Ten, Ten feet. feet. Ten feet. Three meters. Yeah. Why? <laughs> you want him to be able to crawl out. 
<laughs> so we're gonna kill him to get him plus up. Plus, to get out of the chains. Plus, <laughs> three, three bashing damage from falling. Yes. Yeah. Now, how many rounds has it been? Three. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Oh, you're shaping. I'm wondering if I, I'm wondering if I still have shaping up. There we go. Oh, you're gonna close it? <laughs> yeah. I don't think well, he's just sort of. I didn't pay for the duration. It's fine. <laughs> you know what? We're just gonna wash our hands of this whole affair. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Well, isn't it a duration spell? No, it's a potency, a potency spell. spell, right? Because of durability, right? Mm-hmm. But yes, you guys have captured a one Salazar, last name unknown, who's now fallen down into a pit and is currently restrained by big heavy chains. So then uh, Cloak's going to say something, and then he's going to turn to Isabel and allow her to proceed. Um, uh, He's going to lean down into the pit, um, and he's going to steal his face at the guy, and then he's going to say, You're going to shut up, or things are going to get a lot worse. Hey, he hasn't said anything. Yeah, no, he's just admonishing him um and then uh he turns to isabel considering this is still a sheriff's investigation and says i follow your lead uh she scrambles down into the pit sure (laughs) starting to fill up a little bit with water uh checking on him you find him unconscious yeah Mm. Guess I shouldn't have jogged him so hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad day for this guy. However, we did know we needed to incapacitate him. Mm-hmm. And we've done it several ways. Drew, can I make a quick uh, scrutiny to try and get a handle on what this aura of death is? Um, not from where you're at, just because okay. that's a sensory range thing, and currently you can't even see the the camp. No, him. Oh, he doesn't have any kind. Well, yeah, I oh, guess okay. he would. No, no, no. Th- that's it. That's it for because uh, yeah, he would have it too. Yeah. So if you want to do a um uh death endosis uh minus wait minus no no minus not for po- not for scrutiny um. It, it is if, um, oh, that's Revelation. Never right. Mind. Um, I'm trying to think how much opacity this thing has. Also, if you have any Let's say yantras that um, are aspected to divination or could apply to like uh, seeing things, then they give you an equipment bonus. I have my perfected bone knife. Don't know that a knife is all that oriented towards seeing and divining things. No, but the perfective bone is definitely oriented towards Tijia and all things that. No? Okay. Mm-hmm. The shot. Mm-hmm. So no no it modifiers? Uh, correct, no modifiers. Okay. They did not roll. I rolled it. That might just be lagging. As we used to say in the old days of the internet, lag. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, wow, mouse isn't lagging anymore. Hmm. It changed. Uh, try and roll again, Greg. Cool. Nope. Nope. Rip. Okay. Okay. And then post cognition. Uh, what is your reach? Um, it had a, a instant. Sensory because I still I can't touch him. He's too far down. Mm-hmm. And uh duration. Okay. I don't think I actually need the minus four for duration though. Um uh depends on how want... how wide of a block you want to see. Yeah, um like when walking back with the guys and they were telling us about how they would take people. Mm-hmm. When was the most recent time they took someone? Um week or two ago. Okay, yeah, I want to look back to, like, see? 
How much of a minus do I need to get a week? None. None? No, because you pick the time that you want to view this thing in its past. Yeah, it's more that I don't know the specific moment it's in. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get into the duration. So in that case, yeah. uh, da, 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 a week is... Because uh, uh, it's already a duration spell, isn't it? It's a potency spell, I think. Oh, right. Because it's, it's got to come up temporal withstand. Right. Um, so that's a minus four. Because that's advanced. Okay, so that is right yep. there. I would also, let's see. No, I need to overreach by one more as well, because I want the one that will let me fast forward. <laughs> so I don't have to sit here for a right. week of real time. Um, so that's overreaching by two. Mm -hmm. I'll only be rolling three dice. That scale wasn't meant to be there. Which is not great, but... Yeah. And let's see. Yeah, go ahead and roll the paradox. Yep. I guess the overreach wouldn't have counted because one of my answers was my needle. Whatever. Oh. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> is it, is Gisela sits down and goes, on three dice. <laughs> and yeah, I am not. You're not aware. Of, yeah. For this. And the way I have it in my head is that I'm um, sort of finding. Because I've never really looked into the past of someone mm -hmm. before. Not on so screen. I'm sort of finding his thread that he has been following and just like clawing backwards down it. I like that. Just like Ooh, speedily cool. running along it, like pulling on rope. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I okay. like that. It's like, not this, yeah. not this, until not I this. Can this find, is aha. Until I can find the knot that is where the, um, what they were doing with the hostages. Sure. Like when they grabbed one. All right. Cool. Uh, and then body control for Isabel. Uh, for mm -hmm. him so he can heal okay. and wake up all right um just a little overreach i thought we can heal that bashing pretty quickly this is gonna be a, a chance to die or i've already over one so one full yep. die <laughs> all right <laughs> cool not a problem uh so four is uh, four dice Dang. Yeah, you do know he'll rouse in 15 minutes or so, but obviously, yeah, sure. want that fast. Trying enough. to speed that up. Sorry, did you say something? I said I was trying to speed that up. Right. Okay, and that's that. Cool. Um, so yeah, we jump into uh, this guy's past. Since you picked like a week ago, um, and then start scrubbing backwards. And uh, similar to uh, when scrying, a lot of your view is just him and uh, kind of vague things around him, though you can pan around and occasionally, you know, doing the super fast forward, well, rewind, rewind kind of thing. Um, you can see, especially when he reaches out and interacts with things, or talk to somebody, the camera kind of shifts a little bit so you can see them uh, flying through stuff. A lot of bossing around, sleeping, eating, and I don't care about, don't, 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 until you catch not necessarily him in the tent, um, but you see him with uh, the other guy that had been shot and a guy who looks obviously similar to the folks who were rescued, a little beat up, worn not exactly well fed um and he uh sorry um uh, you know, all of a sudden you kind of pump the brakes and he looks at this guy uh his who at this point you kind of recognize as some kind of right hand man uh and says yeah so gotta, gotta make sure i use the right names here uh so prepare this one um, and the, the guy who's bound, uh, he's got some ropes around his wrists, um, and kind of looks up and you in 
I should hang on. That's true. Giza, what languages do you speak? Um, uh, German and English, and I have like shitty Spanish. Okay, shitty Spanish. Um, uh, true. Yes. Wouldn't universal language apply to them? Have you activated that? Oh, you're right. I, I, um, I think so. But you're right. We toggle it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let's yep. say I haven't. It's more interesting if I haven't. Yep. Um, but yeah. Um, preparando. <laughs> that's that's terrible. I apologize to everybody. Um, no. Uh, but yeah, you do pick up, you know, especially because working with Anastasio, you definitely picked up some basic conversational Spanish, especially it's purgatory bluff. Uh, but yeah, you'll get this guy ready and then some more Spanish that's fast and more out there vocabulary. The guy looking up going, wait, hang on, what's going on? Um, as uh, Salvador grabs hold of this guy and drags him out towards the bonfire. Um, okay. Yep. Uh, oh, shit. You watch as uh, Salazar, like, it's got all his, you know, nice clothing on and stuff like that. Walks over to one of the big carts that has all sorts of accoutrement and different little treasures that seem to have been collected and opens one box, which looks like it's it's set at the end of the cart, readily accessible and stuff like that. Flips it open, pulls out this red black robe, deep red. Uh, it's got some various uh, designs on it. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, Can I do like an in and a cult and see if I recognize any of this? That you could do, yes. Because I know we can't do magic and right. um, things, but if I'm just thinking. I didn't <laughs> expect this. Neither did I. Yes. Oh, this is great. Two successes. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, immediately, like looking at this, you don't recognize any of these specific symbols but the patterns laid out damn it you have read enough damn books to recognize a magic robe right Mm -hmm. (laughs) then the motherfucker pulls out and puts on a hat no uh he absolutely does not uh no he instead pulls out then he puts on starry stockings no (laughs) uh but no yeah Uh, lays on the the robe uh and then draws out what is very clearly some kind of gnarly dagger um Mm -hmm. it looks old um for you guys no idea don't recognize it for us we recognize some mayan or aztec iconography on this thing uh the blade itself looks bronze um it is an athame yes Uh, they are doing some some sacrificing huh yes Mm -hmm. um and you know the guy is brought in front of the the bonfire when we come back to salazar and able to see this guy his chest has been bared the shirt kind of ripped open and stuff like that and uh gag shoved into his mouth big leather thing stuffed so yeah there's no screaming um and you can see in the background the tent that all the other captives are in and right in front of it, in front of that fire, you watch this guy get stabbed. And without going into gory details, his car- his heart is cut out and thrown onto the bonfire. Yup. Okay. Well, then I'm going to come out of this trance. That <laughs> it's I like immediately. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just like sat down on the ground at the edge of the pit looking at this dude. And hmm. then wonder what's up with him. Went out. Oh, God. <laughs> And yeah, just relay all of that to you guys. <laughs> and I think we need to get rid of the fire. Thank you, Perry. So my question was, was this just bullshit or fallen magic or I would have seen what I, I wouldn't have seen if they were waking because they actually did so much. I mean, we know that there is magic here. You can tell if he's awakened by examining him right now. Like, Isabel saw 
a life effect on the guy that had been shot in the head, which is why he wasn't dead. But that might have been mm-hmm. spillover from Isabel's spell. It wasn't a life spell. Paradox can do many strange things. I'm going to ask him as soon as he yep. wakes up. You yeah. want to help me out of the pit? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Cloak will reach down, offering you a hand. I don't want him to drown. Yeah, before th- sit him into a sitting position as water kind of accumulates in the bottom of the pit. Mm. Uh, oh, uh, Craig, were you working up soul marks? This is mm-hmm. one you can just definitely roll <laughs> Gnosis plus death. <laughs> if you're just trying to see if he's awakened. Or actually, Gnosis plus Prime. Uh, so Mark should be death, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there, uh, Prime right? has a similar... Like, you can learn yeah, about it as supernatural. Supernal vision. That's... Yep. If it were a rope to your casting. Cool. Looking at him, uh, he, he has some stains on his soul, but uh, Awakening is not one of them. Okay. Mm-hmm. He done fucked up himself. <laughs> uh, See ya. Yeah. Um, more You're l- saying Ash? So maybe 13 and a half minutes later, he... Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, Theo definitely reports that he's definitely not awakened. Yeah, after, after explaining the tale, what you saw, uh, and Theo giving this guy a long, hard look, and at this point... I mean, Theo's not necessarily a... Uh, oh, man, what's the word? It's not Athenian. What is it? Uh, oh, well, whatever. People who study the Awakenings. Uh, but Theo's mm. been looking at souls quite a and bit. And Alethian. Alethian, thank you. Uh, mm. But, yeah, this guy definitely definitely not awakened. Um, he starts to shift and stir, um, you know, l- lifting his legs out of water. Um and kind of Isabel in the in the meantime has like smeared some mud and stuff on her face Ooh, to cool. distinguish her features mm-hmm. and positioned him so he's facing away from the rest of the group. Cool. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And you're and you're up top. I'm in. The oh, OK, because you had mentioned oh, getting shit. out, so I wasn't sure. OK, yeah, that's, that's a better yep. idea. All right. uh, and just kind of crouched low, very feral in front of him kind of thing. And just like poke him right in the forehead. His head oh, comes it. up and, you know, in Spanish, what the fuck? And then kind of a lean back, what the fuck? <laughs> Hello, Salazar. <laughs> <laughs> like looking up and around and Good like, morning. especially for him, he had been in this fight. Now all of a sudden he is in a pit with very sharp sides the rain is still pouring he's sitting in a pool and there is a wild looking woman um in a dark pit with him actually it's true it's probably fucking dark down there too yeah yep uh uh, uh awesome and like you you watch he he stumbles he's trying to figure out what's going on and then he he like you know tries to take control of the situation mm-hmm. and like starts to move and fight the chains a little bit and like winces. Um, my spell's still on him to control his instinct. Oh, right. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so he, yeah, sl- slight shift, um, makes a shift and realizes, oh, that really fucking hurts. And he's not about to try mm-hmm. and bust out of the chains and then kind of looks at you. And again, it's a, it's a very what the fuck, but you know, it's the siren allure and who, who, what are you? I'm someone that could very well sacrifice you to the gods. <laughs> oh, like shifts, legs. And like his, <laughs> you can see he's like planting his feet to try and like see how well he could potentially leverage himself up. He's dealing with a bunch of wound penalties right now. He's not trying this. You're not getting out of this pit unless I say you do. It settles back. What do I call you? Petrichor. Yes. Which, of course, means nothing to him. But yeah, um, Petrichor. One of the stone. He's trying to figure out Petra. I am the calm before the storm. (laughs) 
Like, you see him eyeing you up, trying to read you, and says, you are another practitioner. <laughs> in a way. Which is basically like a kid you in a bakery. You are not like I am. <laughs> and whatever you have been doing is far less of an art than mine. And again, looking up at the pit, we don't need to be antagonists. We can, we can share knowledge, secrets. Share away then. Kind of looks, realizes he's not in a place to negotiate and says, well, you know that I sacrifice. Yes. But the why is always more interesting than the what. Kind of looking you over, and especially because you were speaking Spanish, uh, mm -hmm. he kind of looks and says, I, I sacrifice to the old gods. They give me their blessings. You, you know of these. There are... many beings to which one could be sacrificed. There is only one God. And now he's super confused. Um, kind of shifts a little bit and says, you are kind of starts to look over you and realizes that you are Spanish um, and, and says, did not think that the Catholics had practitioners like us. Hmm. Well, over the years, and I'm going to start lying to him. Um, over the years, my order has had to learn much about the vile things that people do outside of God's grace. And I'm flat out leaning like, I am a fucking inquisitor. <laughs> sure. All right. right. <laughs> yes. Do it. Um, actually, I think we're going to pause here because I think we're, we may have to get into some real actual uh, investigation-y stuff, but to kind of like sure. put a a good pin on this. Uh, what are we, what are we leaning into for this role? Cause I imagine this is going to be, um, probably have to open some doors here, um, uh, in sure. a short amount of time. Uh, this is, uh, manipulation and, uh, expression. I think. Sure. Do the storytelling to, like, and to sell it. The lie. Right. Yeah. Right. That sounds really great. I'm sure the goal here is to make him basically spill his guts before yeah. you literally spill his guts. Yep. So, well, we're off to a great start. Four successes. <laughs> <laughs> just so you guys are aware, depending on his answers, like Theo is totally content to just close his hole and walk. Oh away. yeah. I, I think <laughs> oh, I think sure. a lot of it's like oh wait, hang Isabel's, on. Isabel's very aware of this. He's sacrificing yeah. people. Hang on, this guy just might never see the light of day. Uh, good stuff. And. And that might be the more gracious part of us before we then go into the camp. Yep. Well, yeah, D depending on his answers, basically, depending on his answers, are going to determine whether he's conscious when it happens or not. <laughs> um, wow. Oh, good stuff. Uh, um, and this gives you oof. guys, like, man, two weeks, three weeks? Oh, man, yeah, that's time. Yeah, so uh, a classic Drew cliffhanger. Um, so Because next week I'll be in uh, Philadelphia for PAX Unplugged discussion on whether or not we will be streaming with them um i think they were talking about doing some stuff when we come back that'll be uh -huh. the 17th where we will possibly do a one shot of kids on brooms um when we come a uh, week after that will be christmas eve we're not playing on not christmas playing. eve folks week after that is new year's eve which i i'm good to play i don't know about everybody else 
I'm fine with that. Oh, the timing's fine. I mean, there's going to be some hijinks happening after that, but that <laughs> four to seven is no big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Davos get turned up to 11 until close to midnight. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that's right. So that's, uh, so yeah, so we'll, we may, we may not see our gang back until, uh, until the end of 2022. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. The end of the year. End of the year, literally. So, Lent, you have time to plot your Inquisition. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Please, yeah. Uh, good Ooh, stuff. Yes. Yeah. No one expects it, says Chat. It's the end of the year as we know it. I thought that's. I thought so, that's where you were going when you talked about pulling out like a big fancy red robe. I was like, oh fuck, it's the fucking Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, nope. I was like, oh. Well, now I've got a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the Inquisition, uh, yes, um, it's very, very good um, that you all are enjoying this. And boy, I, I was expecting all this and we're like, hang on, we have to detour to deal with Isabel Zoneros. And then we're going to come back to some fucked up shit. Uh, some fucked up shit. Um, so, yes. Uh, but Isabel's stronger now, so it was worth it. It's true. Got that noses too. So, um, thank Side you. Side quest. Level up. <laughs> Worth it. Then go back and kick the main story quest. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, speaking of main story quest, uh, I'm going to go play Final Fantasy. Thank you all for joining <laughs> us. You're probably yeah. not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the logging queue is so, like 3,500 and it keeps breaking. Um, if, if you uh, wish to support us monetarily, that's patreon.com slash occultistanonymous or staylucky.club. Uh, if you want to hang out with us on Discord, highly suggested we have the best community uh on all of discord um and that's uh www.yeetinto.space uh come hang out talk about mage talk about other tabletop rpgs talk about birds talk about food um show us your final fantasy characters because that's yeah that's going to be a thing for a while um (laughs) and uh, show us your mog yeah and uh on YouTube, yeah. if you're going to be in philadelphia uh for pax unplugged do look me up i'm going to be running power rangers friday morning oh yeah um mm-hmm. i will be running alien saturday morning by morning i mean like 10 o'clock um <laughs> and that evening i'm doing kids on brooms and then sunday morning i'm doing horror D, which is actually just gonna be wacky hijinks with uh the scooby-doo gang but in D. uh <laughs> So a lot of fun stuff. That sounds incredible. It's, it's going to be super it's dumb. Be I still have to write up the character sheets, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I got to go practice my Rita Repulsa. Um, oh, yeah. yes. So I will uh, I will report back because the Power Rangers game looks really fun. Um, All right. So that may actually be a one shot that we have to do. Um, so anyways, cool. uh, we will catch you guys uh, maybe next week. Well, you'll catch them next week or something. So. Keep an eye out. See you soon.